Hey, yo, where Nick at? Back there in the cut. Chris TV here at the Middle School Hoops Basketball Camp in Indianapolis. And to my right, I have one of the top players in the country, a player from Chi-Town. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. One thing I would say is, I feel like if you could prosper, like make it out of Chicago, I feel like Chicago builds people that are adaptable anywhere in the world. One quote that I try to live by is, once you carry your own water, you'll know the value of every drop. Oh, that's a good question, actually. So in eighth grade, I ended up homeschooling, and I would work out at 2 a.m., and then I wouldn't wake up till like 8, go to the gym at 9, and then I'll have a workout at 4, like when I was done with school, and I'll go again at like 10, and then like I'd get like five in a day. It won't be all workouts, so it'll like be like basketball, lifting, and I'll do pool workouts, like just maintain my body. And then I would meditate, I would write, and like I would just have like mental health sessions. Yeah. So then that way, when you're starving and need something, it's not like, yeah. hurry up, cook, 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 you know, it's just in there. Right. Yeah. That would give you a little age, bro. Like, I've noticed it sped up my metabolism so much because like, really? I'm back to eating like four times a day. Like, how, like when I was a high school basketball player, I was eating like five times. We don't eat that stuff, bro. It's just in these couple days. Like, I'm always trying to eat, like, a full year, five o'clock, and then eat my mom's bar at seven. Freshman year, I lived, like, 50 miles away from the school, so that I would have to get up at, like, six o'clock. I would tell my mom that I would have early practices sometimes, just so I can get dropped off early, because otherwise she wouldn't have dropped me off. I would go to the field, I go to the football field and run, and then I walk back up for school. Um, that's something I used to do, like if I couldn't get workouts in. And then I started getting up shots after practice, and then I met, I got with athletic gains, and I started doing AM like lifting. It would depend. I go at 6:30. Normally I go at 6:30, and then I get to school by like 8:30. I would just eat a lot. Like I used to have a timer that I was set to 2 a.m to wake up and I had a pe I'd make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I would already have a protein shake made. And then I would wake up, eat, and then go back to sleep. Um, I did it all every day of freshman year. That's what happened, you make shit this time.
What I've learned with James is having a really good core, um, single leg mobility, ankle mobility, and then with the lifting part, just working on like rotational strength, do upper body, and then we just do a lot, whole lot of balancing and plyometrics and stuff like that, so. So I've been lucky to work with Amari at Athletic Games since he was in eighth grade. Um, definitely one of the hardest working kids I've ever met. Uh, great attitude and just really has the urge to get better. Like he'll push you and make sure you as a coach are coaching him hard. And that's something that you don't find a lot in, look, in uh, kids. So. Can you say uh, like your training philosophies? I know you don't use a lot of weights for service. Gotcha. So our training philosophy doesn't use a lot of weights. We're all about single leg balance, single leg strength. Um, think about when you're moving on the basketball court, you don't need to sit down and bench 90 pounds on each hand. You just got it that quick. One, two. Uh, all on his head. It's <laughs> good now. Every day? I'd be up in the weight. I mean, I wake up like two hours early. Oh, bro, you gotta be that nine. I'm up at seven. I'm then. I need that hour and a half window for anything to happen. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Nah, you're turning it down, man. Chick fil A. One second. Chick fil A. They said they wanted Chick fil A, but they had to go to Dash at four. I'm just hungry, man. Leave on me. Up and leave on me. Dude, did you just eat off the fork? Mm -hmm. Hmm? You ate off the fork? I mean, well, I did give him the address, it says. I think I lifted up, lifted it up with the chicken and bit the chicken. You said what, bro? I you lifted the chicken up with the fork and then bit into the chicken. Oh, good, because I got not, you. Not, not put the mouth in my fork. Okay. I mean, put the fork in my mouth. Okay, bro. <laughs> Number one meal. A, a, can I have another one? A number number one meal, no pickle. Can you make the fry a large? Okay. And then can you add, can you add another sandwich? Yeah. What things did you want for the combo? Um, half fruit punch, half lemonade. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it a wrap. I gotta change my eating habits. So I, I, I ate a lot of pasta. What I've learned is that. What you put into your body is gonna come back to you and work in your favor times a million. You know, fruits, veggies, you know, the basics. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. One thing I would say is, I feel like if you could prosper, like make it out of Chicago, I feel like Chicago builds people that are adaptable anywhere in the world. Them shorts is fire, boy. <laughs> them shorts is fire. Hey! <laughs> you look like you already did. Good day. That's how you feel? Good day.
and you can't take the Chicago out of someone. So that's something that I'm very prideful about. Um, definitely the city, like the city is in me. I don't know, Chicago's very cutthroat. So it's like, you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to know how to move. I mean, I feel like if you're in Chicago and I go to any open run, I know even if the player is not good or whatever the talent level may be, they're always gonna play hard and they're always gonna like try to rattle you in some type of way. And it's like knowing how to keep your composure, like building your toughness at the park. I'll go to the park, like the local parks and just play pickup ball. Like honestly, like that's, how, that's where I gain like some of my grit for sure. You got behind the backs now. Last set behind the back. Beautiful, good. 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 Right here, Mario, we go left hand. We're gonna go left hand all the way to the middle. And then we're gonna go right hand all the way to the other side. Okay? Just floaters, just floaters. So once I pass it to you, two steps. One, two, up left hand. Right, two quick steps. Good, one, two, up. Nice, one, yep. Good. One. Shot, I need your steps to be quick. I need your two steps to be quick. Come on, boy. Same thing in the middle. One, two, back to that left hand. All right, I don't want you guys to go no further than this line right here. All right, here we go. Good. Get in there, girl. One. One. Good. One. Shot, let him get out the way. Watch it. Two. Go. Three, go. Right hand, push. Good. One, three, four. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Two quick steps, shot. Four. So we just, just rest it right about there, Ice. My fault. That's right there, right there. Perfect. So we just kind of working this floaters right here off this Euro. Going downhill. Going right into that right, right floater. All right, so you're just throwing the ball, coming right back out of it, okay? So throwing it left. Snatching, coming right back into your float. All right, throw it that way. Good. One. All right, you get that. Good. Two. Six minutes. Going the other way now, okay? So you're throwing it off the left. And get into that left, left, okay? Right here off the left, left. All right, here you go. Good. Good. One. Good. One. Straight up, shot. Good. One. Hey. Come on, sweat. One. Good. Two. Now let's work on that touch. Good. Nice. One. Let it go quicker. A little touch. Teardrop. So there's a difference, right? If you guys are gonna shoot a runner, it's a runner, and a floater is a floater. You know the difference, right? You know the difference? If I'm shooting a runner, I'm holding it like this, and I'm guiding it, and I'm shooting it like that's a runner. You're shooting a runner. So I ask you, Tony Parker, teardrop, quick, let it go, All right? So there's a difference. It's either you're gonna guide it and a runner, or you're gonna float it. So right now we're working on floaters. All right, let's go. Go. There you go. It's quick little touch up. Touch up. Beautiful. Trying to fight through this. I'm holding ice. One, two. Quick two feet float. So me, I'm that big, I'm gonna just be dropping right here for you. Right here for you. Boom. Quick float. Yep, he's just holding you off. He's just holding you off. So don't take your eye off me though. All right, so when you come off, when you come off here, here. Then your eyes to the rim after. All right, you good, let's go. There we go. Hold them off again, stay in here, Josh. You guarding two right here. Good, yep, yep, good, nice. There we go, four just like that. Come on, shot, go, shot. Good, good, there we go, good feet, good. Yep, nice. Hold him off. 
Good. Yup. Good. Eyes. Nice. One. That's it. One. LA was just a change of scenery for me. Chicago and LA are totally different to me. I feel like LA has a bunch of different cities in one city. One thing that's unique about LA is that it's, LA is the land of opportunities. What makes LA the land of opportunities? The people that you meet if you, uh, if you do things the right way and play your cards right. Come off your first look over that shoulder when you feel them, because you're looking for roller, lift, corner, dunker spot, float. So your eyes should be here, then to there. Right there, this right here. Do you play the four? Well, I'm showing you, exactly. You usually be here, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yup. Yup, you just throw that shit to love. You get what I'm saying? Come up and pick you up, okay? Here we go. Good. Eyes, yep. Good. Just give me a little more eyes to this side. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. Come on, eyes. Good. Yep. There it is. Beautiful. Same thing on the other side. One each. Mm-hmm. Over the shoulder. Yep. Yep. Nice. All right, perfect. Start inside. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. So, and then you guys can do that with less ball handling. You can just body angles and footwork, okay? So, down, up. Quick, we got 10 makes. Good, nice base every time. Power through the legs, touch at the top. Good, nice base every time. Power through the legs, touch at the top. Five. It's five. Kind of my live for me, so I keep talking. There we go. A little louder, fellas. There it is, Shy. Good, good. Good, Ice. Good. 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 Eight. Eight. Good. Good footwork. Good. Nine. Good. Just get more of a space between your legs on your lunge. So put that right leg back more. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Nope, they're going together. Mm -hmm. One. Go your feet. Cool. All right, good. Try to make sure you spread and balance every time, okay? That was a good one, though. That's the last few years, a little uh, close together. Right. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> nice. 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 You could work on different stands too. You could work on just. All right, you can switch it up. You ready? Good work, boy. You gonna get like dreads, like long dreads? Probably like, probably like Han, like, 
Yeah. You want some yeah. dress for real? But like, probably like, oh, like yeah. Wait, yours are braids? What I, I want to no, do like, some, I want to do like, strange. fire. It's like, like two strands. Oh, okay. so like, I want to take them out. It's like this long. I'm going to have like black strands. You said you going to get some dress? No, hell no. braids. Yeah, I'm going to get braids. Yeah, braids. You want cornrows. I'm a light skin for having cornrows? Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. Classify a light skin because I feel like light skins get a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> you already know that. Nah, but I don't know. Nah, but what? You don't know what? I don't feel like what I fit that. that you don't know? <laughs> Bro, like I don't fit that category. You don't fit <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't like, like, you know, like a dozen black skin. Are you brown skin or white? Which one are you then? No, I'm a, I'm a dark skin. It may not look like it, but I'm a dark skin. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like Chicago. Shit, Rack like, light skins you know, don't count. Like, like last he was like a dark skin that looked like skin. I'm a proud light skin, matter of fact. I'd like to step in on this. Yeah, question. ask him. Uh, it's really him. It's really me. You know, I'm Larry. I've known him ever since he was maybe about like three, what three or four months old. Yeah. And I really watched him grow into what he's become he become now. And you know, whenever he ever needs some advice, I'm kind of I'm on some like big brother. Whenever he needs some advice, he, hey, hey, big bro, you could you could help me with my handles. He would be like the spiritual guy. Sometimes, like big bro, can you help me? Work on my handles, and I'm just like, bro, I'm trying to help you <laughs> handle your mind. Can be cash though. I mean, you fix it up though. To be honest, from that from that point. Nah, it's nah. That was a long time ago though. Yeah. When you were leader leader shooter, that was a when minute I, ago. When I was teaching. Yeah. Right. What? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, but it's all right. One day, one day you would get there and you would just look me, and I'll, I'll be on the cold side. You can... Yeah, so sensei, since he taught me, why did you quit basketball? Like, you just who sensei? We gonna call him Sensei Leroy. Why did I quit basketball? Um, <laughs> I think it's, it's always been my passion. As much as I love playing the game, I love g giving the game to my young bulls. Cool. You know what I'm saying? I see them out here you said what? doing the thing, and I, it just like Amari, especially, he reminded me of me when I was his age. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when I was out there, young and hustling and, and coming up, up on the court, and uh, all I, I just knew he needed some guidance, and I feel like I was the public person. I've already been there and done that like three times. Before. Awesome. That's the answer. He's just saying, I'm okay, okay. <laughs> you ready? Hey, can I, can I hear some different beats? The whole forearm, something like that, you can always do a little makeup on it and it'll be gone. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. All right. Cool? Yeah. All right. All right. Let me get that ready. Thank you. Are you sure? Now you can't take this back. Because this is marketing. I mean, we, we strategically put them places. So what happens if you have to become, you know, like a, a doctor and you wash your hands and they see this? They just gonna, they gonna, hey, they gonna get a good lesson as to what 1010 means. 1010. So when I first got to Sierra, 10, 10, 13, and 21 were my three options because when I got when I got to the school, jerseys were already ordered. Another player on the team had my num my original number that was five growing up. I ended up looking up what 10 meant before I had to make a quick decision and 10 meant the number of new beginnings. 
but that just really stuck out to me because um, from Chicago, I went to Oost Christian, and then I came to Sierra, and all those have been new beginnings. So 10 is the number of new beginnings. And then I asked myself, um, so I, I, I started seeing 10, 10 a lot um, on the clock. I don't even have to, it's not premeditated. Like, I don't, I don't know, I just always see 10, 10 in the morning and at night. I'll tell you right now. It means that you're awakening of your spiritual self and that everything is working out for your higher self. The first two numbers, one and zero, have great significance. Number one means moving into a new beginning, starting fresh or opening towards a new path in life. On the other hand, zero signifies moving into the great void where everything comes to the creator and will return to the creator. In other words, stepping into a much higher renaissance towards an uplifting frequency that is closer to divine consciousness. So that that's kind of what I'm into. Um, so yeah, there's a storyline, 10, 10, for sure. Now we're washing and drying, and then you can put it on top. Uh, okay, right? perfect. Okay, I, thank you so much. I'm going to get you too. Okay, I told you, bro got them hands for real. Hey, it's all too much. I threw my boy with you. Like my mentality. I mean, my mentality has always been the same. It's just basketball. Um, kill everyone that's in front of me and make it abundantly clear that they should not be on the court. And winning, I feel like I'm a winner. I know I'm a winner, actually. Just having that winning mentality, if you just do whatever it is that you gotta do to win, I feel like that'll work in your best interest. And for a lot of, and for a lot of you people, the easiest way to just, like, just do the little things. Like you don't gotta do too much. Like the little things matter too. Everyone wanna be the star. Like you know, some 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 people have a role. Sometimes you have to you have to fit into a role and just be really good at that. Because when you're thinking team, you're gonna win. So that's one thing I would say. Like don't always be greedy and be thinking about yourself. Like everyone gonna eat. So. That's my advice. feel like that was the best thing I could have ever done because with my mentality, I know what I'm capable of. I know that if I have to, if I have to score, I'm going to score. If you need me to be a facilitator, like I'm going to be a facilitator. But it's fitting into a role because I wanted to win. I'm not egotistic. So, I mean, I say this all the time. You get drafted to Houston. You get drafted to Brooklyn. Guess what? Brooklyn got Katie and Kyrie. You're going to have to get them the ball, so what else are you going to do to keep yourself on the floor? You can defend, you can do a whole bunch of things. I just feel like it's basketball, so there's not anything that I wouldn't want to do to be on the floor. So my mentality is to just do whatever it is that's being asked of me and add my gifts and my mentality. And then, like, it's like this magic potion, and if you put them all together, I'm like, that makes me. Like, I was young. I was so young on my freshman year team. Um, I had Scotty, KJ, Cassius, L, all of them, Drew. I just had a lot of people that were just like big brothers. And it was hard because 
I didn't really mess with anybody in LA, so I'd have looked to my team and they were just mad cool. So like playing a role proved to people that I could play under any system. And I'm a basketball player again, I'm gonna keep saying it. So I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to stay on the floor. And that's just a mentality, that's not anything else. Because if you love the game, you're gonna do whatever it is. And guess what, once you do whatever it is that's being asked of you very well, like your leash gets longer, that's how the game works. You got people gotta work smarter and harder sometimes. Like they make it so difficult when it, it don't even gotta be like that. Like it really don't, but because guess what? Everyone wants to be a king, but they don't want to put in the work of a servant. So I feel like I put in my time, I pay my dues, and some natch. Like basically, what I'm trying to say is my leash is gonna get longer. So sophomore year, I had I had freedom. I would say I was aggressive. I had a lot of guys on the team that were just some dogs. So it made my whole, my job a whole lot easier. You, all you gotta, I don't gotta say everyone, you just gotta look down the list. It had a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of dogs. So, cause freshman year, that was like 157. And I spent a lot of time in the weight room and then I got to 188 and then I just been keep going up. I would definitely say my biggest improvement was my body. Um, being able to take hits. I got more athletic. I worked a lot more on my skill than I ever have this past summer. Uh, what drills and what did you do? Yeah, that way. You said what? <laughs> what drills do you Bow. Do? My bad. My bad. Uh, a lot of form shooting. Um, got with the right people. I worked with Dash. He's just been helping me with my game. And then we got our coaching staff has a lot of people that know the game as well. So Coach Dre has impacted my game a lot. All the coaches, Coach Ed, Foof, um, and just teaching me how to play hard, give those second and third efforts, and just really push me to my limits and press my buttons every day and practice and stuff. So I'm very, very appreciative of those people. No, I feel like when anything you do in life, it's just repetition and like doing it consistently. So I would work out two, three times a day in the summer and just really perfect my, try to perfect my craft. I've got how to, it was something like once you carry your own water you'll know the value of every drop and basically what that means is when you're not the one that's going out having to hustle and do whatever it is that you have to do you often blindsided by the fact that you're not going out and getting what you want in your life I just try to live by that and I take and not really take anything for granted in life and maximize whatever it is that I have to do and learn as much as possible throughout the whole process.